I guess, again, this is kind of putting you on the spot, but in terms of looking back at, um, you know, past mistakes you've made, whether beginning your career or all the way to today, um, <laughs> getting on this call, um, you know, <laughs> what, what are ones that have stood out as, as being major lessons that you've kept with you? There's always reasons, right? Uh, there's a Douglas Adams have this great story of reason. You go look it up. It's really funny. Uh, and there's always reasons. For reasons, you go to do something. And I, I wish I had that little uh, advisor on my shoulder. When you go to do something and you do it for reasons, and very very quickly you realize those reasons are no longer valid. I, I wish I had um, that something in my brain that allowed me to reassess it and basically cut bait. And I'm just not that person. I'm just so freaking stubborn. I can't. I can't stand myself sometimes. I just won't. I just won't give up. I, I when I when I'm given something and it's not working, I just try harder. And it's not. That's not really healthy. I wish. When I look back at the things that I've that I just weren't successful, they were almost never because I gave up too easily. It was almost always because I was too stubborn to realize it wasn't working and to reassess. You're bang the hammer harder. You know, yeah, it's just like it's like yeah, you know, if they don't understand me, I'll yell louder, right? It's like it's not, it's not. Um, that's really not healthy, and um, I don't know how that's advice or not. Though it's kind of really negative. I tend to give people positive sharing experiences, but I would share that most of the time things have not worked out for me um, way before they ultimately they ultimately closed, and I realized okay, it didn't work out. Um, I knew it wasn't working, uh, and way, way, way before that, I could have walked away and had lots of opportunities to do so. And just, I just, because I'm so freaking stubborn, I won't give up. And I think that that is a great quality when you're pursuing excellence or you're pursuing success. It is not a good quality when you're in a downward spiral and you, and you really need to get out. Is there any uh, kind of best practices you would implement uh, in a, a newer version of yourself, the hindsight version, um, in terms of whether it's to check in, you know, every three months on, you know, where things are at or whatever to kind of see. You know, I, I thought a lot about this recently, and um, I think what uh, what is there's like the hundred, first hundred days, and there's all these books on stuff. I read a lot of books around management stuff too because I wasn't a, I wasn't I didn't go to management school. Then it was all it was all self taught, uh, and I think there's a really good one, which is you start a new opportunity, um, you're full of uh, enthusiasm and optimism go into your calendar and in the future, put things in the future of, I think I'm gonna be here at this mm. time. And this is why I'm doing it. And just stick it in your calendar, forget you put it there. Cause then sometime in the future, you're gonna trip upon that thing sitting in your calendar. Uh, and I haven't done this yet, but I thought I thought about this and I, I thought, oh, this is a really good idea of just kind of putting a check on myself and saying, hey, check in, check in on yourself, Lou. Did you, are you, are you grinding at this point? Are you still happy? Are you doing what you wanna do? So. I, I was reading in a book, uh, a while back, uh, there was like a website um, somewhere that you can actually email yourself a year from now. And uh, so the whole point is to kind of, you know, project where you, you want to be. And then exactly what you just said, it's, it's a chance to reflect on, well, okay, uh, I thought I'd be, you know, doing all this. Is that a, you know, a positive thing or a negative thing? So uh, yeah, maybe I forget. I got to try it myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think writing a letter to yourself that you know, really you're giving me clarity I hadn't really thought about, which is I should probably do this, which is here's why, here's all the reasons I'm getting into something and things change. And the, and the problem is it's very insidious. It's the boiling frog syndrome. You know, you don't really feel mm -hmm. it changing until you look back and go, oh my God, there was a point where it changed. And I just, I knew it was, and I just didn't, didn't pay attention. Right. So that future self, uh, writing a note to your future self is a, I think a really good technique and, um, I'm going to do it as soon as we're off the podcast. <laughs>